everyone. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hope everyone enjoyed their weekend. Today is November 20th, 2023. I want to thank all of you for joining me and thank you for subscribing and for those of you that have shared my videos. I want to talk about all the earthquakes that have been happening there in western Texas up by the Panhandle. In the last month, the last 30 days, there's been 604 earthquakes that is in this area, the largest. In the last um, last week has been a magnitude 3.6. It was shallow, only 3.4 miles below sea level. All earthquakes are measured from sea level. Back on November 8th, there was a magnitude 5.2. That was 4.6 miles below sea level. Over 1,134 people said they felt that earthquake, and that was a thrust earthquake. A thrust earthquake is where the fault line rises up on one side and stays stationary on the other. That earthquake occurred at 4.30 a.m. It was considered one of the fourth largest earthquakes for the state of Texas. USGS revised the location of that earthquake, and you can see... This was the original spot, and this is where they revised it to, but it's still the same location. Because of years and years of pumping millions of gallons of the so-called product water back into the underground as a disposal method, it has highly likely increased these earthquakes because of the increased pressure and has awakened ancient fault lines. I'll give you an idea. Let me bring this out. This is probably, I finally found the fault line where this is all going on. And I don't have all the earthquakes, you know, placed here. But I did map out the location, um, the area where they've been happening. And this is most likely the Grisham Fault Zone. I'm going to try and make it a little bit bigger for you. Okay, there we go. You can see here we also have the Delaware Basin, um, Pecos, Texas. This 5.3 earthquake was felt about 215 miles away, all the way to Santa Teresa there in New Mexico. USGS downgraded it to a magnitude 5.2. I'm sure there was damage, but no one's talking. In the last month alone, there's been 62 earthquakes, a magnitude 2.5 or greater. Last year, there was more magnitude 2.5 earthquakes in Texas than California, according to Texas officials. And as of um, the first week of November of this year, there in Texas, there has been 591 earthquakes of a magnitude 2.5 or greater. Uh, compare that to the 207 earthquakes they had as of uh, 2019. To show you how earthquakes have increased in Texas, um, from 1847 to 1986, there was only 106 earthquakes of a magnitude 3.0 or greater. Um, but between 2017, that's when they started really monitoring the earthquakes there, until 2021, uh, there was 130 earthquakes of a magnitude 3 or greater. So here you can see 614, but it does include areas um, a little bit closer to the border. And just in this area alone, magnitude 2.5 or greater, uh, for the last 30 days, there has been 62 earthquakes. And then for the entire state, for all earthquakes for the last month alone, and you know they don't report them all. There's been 731 earthquakes. Now for the one of the larger earthquakes last year, there was a magnitude uh, 5.4. Right there, let me bring it in. And I drew out in white where they did have damage all the way down. Let me come down here. Near San Antonio. That 5.4 earthquake on December 16th caused damage, like I said, down there in San Antonio. It was a 5.4. And let me bring this over. 
It was to the Robert B. Green Historical Building in downtown San Antonio. It was deemed unsafe by structural engineers following the damage from the earthquake. I don't know if Google Earth will take me to the proper location, but it was in the 900 block of um, West Martin Street there in San Antonio. All right, it took me a little bit to find it on Google Earth, but here's the building. And evidently there was cracks on the outside of this building. There was a video posted online showing the cracks going through the outside of the building. The building evidently was built in 1917 and what they did was they closed off even the street. Evidently there was several cracks in the building. I'm going to try and bring it over so you can see the images here that were shown on this outside wall here. Let me bring it over a little bit more. There's one of the cracks and another crack. That one's a little bit more significant. And another crack. It's a little blurry. I don't know if you can see it. And there's that one. In this image here, you can see this probably is the more significant one uh, that's between the windows of the upper floor. Going back to Go um, Google Earth, this image here was from March of this year. And they recently had started working on um, renovations. And it had recently been added to um, historical sites. So let me bring this out. And we'll go back to uh, all the earthquakes. Originally they said it was a magnitude 5.7. Okay, and then they downgraded it. Revised it to a magnitude... Uh, 5.4 and a 5.3, whichever you want to believe. So the point being that this other earthquake um, that they had recently on the 8th, I know they got damage. I know they got damage. Just that no one has reported it for some reason. Yeah. Did you have damage? Let me know. It is a very sparsely populated area, um, but for being reported so far, even up there into uh, New Mexico, yeah, makes you wonder about the oil lines, the gas lines. The Delaware Basin, let me make this larger. It is doing, and it does have stress from natural tectonic movement. It is doing a, a clockward rotation. Um, but having the um, fluids injected into the ground, yeah, they have reactivated many of these ancient fault lines. Um, originally, they didn't think that the Grisham fault line went so far west, but now they believe it actually extends even farther when, than what they initially believed. So, what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for sharing. Please subscribe and I will talk to you later. God bless y'all. Bye.